Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel. Um, and uh, truly, welcome to my channel. If you are a new subscriber, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome. If you're w straddling the fence and thinking, oh, should I become a subscriber? I would say opt to be a subscriber. Anyway, I am doing this video, <coughs> excuse me, immediately after I did the video on organizing just one paper scrap drawer. One of those five inch deep drawers that uh, in those little rolly things that Michael sells. Anyway, I, of course, the video went on for an hour and then I realized that's enough. <laughs> that's maybe too much. So I just continued working on by myself. So I'll just quickly show you. Um, and I think that, like I talked about how, you know, the variety, blah, 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 blah. Watch the video and then you'll know. Um, okay, so purple, green, orange, yellow. This is really creased. Um, pink, burgundy, red, neutral, black, white, gray. I started one for metallics. I hope that's a good idea. And blue. Now, actually, now that you guys are here, I don't think that these are going to lie down. Well, I don't really want to do that. So, okay, I'm going to have to find another solution for these big bags. And clearly they are the more useful size when it comes to this. I thought that I'd be able to manage with these shallower ones because they can lie flat in here. But anyway, another problem for another day. Now, as you saw me going through those papers, you know that I was basically sorting by colors. And then there were some that were just, you know, awful. Then there were some that were itty bitty. Then there were some that defied definition. And I thought, okay, what am I gonna do with that? And I started a, a little pile for collage. And then I thought, well, why don't I just deal with it instead of, you know, putting away somewhere and then leaving that for another day you know like strike while the iron is hot so i found a couple of pieces of 12 by 12 paper like this one is especially unattractive in my opinion so i'm going to use this as the basis for a master board and this could be a second one if i uh, i'm on a roll so I'm going to call this video Making a Master Board Using the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. And I'll leave it to you to figure out which, <laughs> which is which. I'm thinking that any chimpanzee could do a master board when all the elements are beautiful. But let's test me, <laughs> you, anybody who tries this, with doing it when it's just a disparate pile of stuff, you know, from ew, this glitzy stuff to old calendar pages to this is part of a digital. Anyway, that is the plan. Now I've lifted my camera up higher than I normally do so that more of this <laughs> beautiful thing will be visible at a time at the uh, at any given moment but of course <coughs> you still may not see everything and i think i just have to ask you to trust and um, know that i'm trying to do my best here so I think to avoid this looking really too hokey, I need to start with, you know what, I maybe just, well, I'll turn this into a signature page, because that could maybe work in a retro type journal. See, 
dealt with one piece already. Um, this is also wrapping. Okay, maybe I should try this. Let's say salvage this one as well. Because if I ever did a kid or boy journal, that could work there. Okay, so we still have a lot of awful stuff here. Um, okay, so I started to say to avoid a completely... Uh, to avoid the idea that you know I've just had a breakdown and this is my first arts and craft project <laughs> under medication um, I'm going to start with this bigger piece and I'll just pull out my that's not my favorite one my tearing ruler but I'm also not going to waste too too much time tearing um, because we know that that adds a lot of time too. So I'm thinking that with these larger pieces, number one, it will go a bit faster. And number two, it will um, give the eye a place to rest every so often. <clears throat> oh, that's really big. <clears throat> Should have popped a something. I sure hope I didn't just give you a look at my bosom as I reach for a Werther's. I'll just keep this in my cheek, hopefully, and keep the ticklish throat from um, becoming a problem. Okay, so we're just going to glue. And <clears throat> for the time being, I should be able to glue right on here, knowing that if my glue strokes go beyond, that's okay, because something else will go down almost immediately. So just randomly... I wonder... You know what? I think I'm going to expose... The only thing that's half decent on here are those orangey stripes. So I'm going to let that be part... Whoops, come on. Uh, let that be part of the design. I switched um, whatever system I had for sorting my tools here on my desk... I switched it into a Lazy Susan that I thrifted. Oh, that's not very good. That can be trimmed. Um, so I'm just wondering how long before I slice myself open on these darn things. Like this one, the shield stays in place. Oh, now it, now it will cooperate just because I'm trying to prove to you. Oh, see? And this has been, I'm going to take them out of there. This has been the case since I changed the blade. So maybe I did something wrong. Oh. So <clears throat> if you've seen me do master boards before, hey, maybe that will be a better solution. If I keep turning it around, you'll see more. <clears throat> I... Um, if you've seen me do master boards before, you know that I like to use several of the same thing first. <clears throat> Excuse me, to create some continuity. And to whoopsie. And to spread the color around. Now that is not um you know, as critical when you're doing a master board as it is if you're just doing a kind of a finished um, collage project of some kind. Let's put the cut edge against the edge. Not that that should matter, but... Now, 
because of course with a master board it will be cut up and color distribution will sort of take care of itself. Now the reason I chose this particular paper is number one, I said I don't like it, but number two, it's just, it's thin. So it can stand to be reinforced. The back will automatically be journaling space. And um, hmm. um, what, was I, what else was I going to say? Can't remember. I thought I had three points to make. If it comes to me, you'll be the first to know. Yeah, it's funny. We, um, I can count on one hand the number of paper pads that I bought brand new. Um, typically, I buy just either, you know, stuff that somebody has uh, is selling at a garage sale or thrifted type items. I mean, started packages and so on. Um, okay, I have three of these, so so I typically have um, kind of some, you know, a weird combination of papers, partial packages, and so on. Whoopsie. Even at the best of times, it's a good idea to turn your um, page around periodically. Adjust to make sure that you're, I don't know, I guess you keep seeing it at a different, from a different angle. Hey, maybe this one I could do just, well, I don't have enough. Not enough scraps. And probably don't have anything else suitable. Um, to, um, you, by keeping, by turning, by Remembering to keep turning and looking at a different angle, it prevents um, you from us from making it maybe unbalanced in some way. And it also um, especially if you're working with script, It also kind of lets you have your <clears throat> your text maybe less readable because it is um, right side up, upside down, sideways, whatever. seems that I have this unconscious, subconscious desire to make order out of chaos. <clears throat> I certainly didn't plan to um, Try to preserve those orange stripes. But yet, 
That seems to be what I am doing. So I don't know, is that... Maybe let's just go with it and see if it works. And maybe to force myself to cover those other uh, pink and green stripes up. I will leave a little bit of distance there. So that I have to have something to bridge the difference or bridge the patterns. torn a little bit crooked, but hey. Now, let me just quickly dig through this pile. <coughs> I am almost positive that I don't have any more of that, but that's okay. We'll make it stretch. different okay so what I have left is this these three pieces so what I'm going to try to do is figure out without taking too too much time Try to figure out the best way to maximize this. So here, this sort of goldenrod color uh, stripe would be okay because it kind of picks up with that. I'm going to offset that a bit so these two shapes are different, uh, different sizes. Oh, yuck. That was a little vigorous squashing down. And I'm also trying to be aware, but not overly concerned about the color distribution of the circles. Oh. That big glob is still there. Okay. And not enough at this end. So do you find <clears throat> that collaging is one of the best activities ever, ever, ever? I certainly think so. Maybe if I put that right to the edge, that would be fine. Kind of too bad I left that piece so big, but hey, life's too short for regret. You know, and that's, I'm saying it kind of flippantly right now, but that is something that I truly believe, and I've been saying that to myself and anyone who'd listen for many, many, many years. Um, I always uh, think, I give myself 
the benefit of the doubt and say that I always made the best decision possible in that moment in time um, based on what I knew, my life experience, my age, my, you know, just all those factors. I think I'm going to divide this one in half, roughly, so that I can get a little more mileage out of it. Quite a bit of blue there. So, chances are this you're going to think I'm nuts, but anyway, I'm going to maybe expose that yellow stripe there and this one. I think that <clears throat> that it's good every so often, and that's part of what's happening here today with this. Give yourself a challenge. Don't don't coddle yourself. Don't make it so easy on yourself that you forget to that you forget to grow. That you forget to challenge yourself. So, as I said, I could have picked something easy. Love collaging. I think it's very uh, zen, a very zen-like activity, especially if you don't have to do a video. Um, maybe closer to this color. Now I have this that was just going to stand out like a sore thumb. Maybe that'll be fine there. Anyway, push yourself. Challenge yourself. If you um, remember school or if you're still in the workforce or um, I'm sure you can think back to an occasion where somebody or circumstances forced you to um, really go outside your comfort zone. And maybe in the moment you were afraid and maybe in the moment you uh, really resented it and kind of wanted to scream. The reality is that when we get chances like that, when those opportunities arise, and I'm using the opportunities, not I mean, the word opportunities, no problems, we should jump, jump at the chance because that is where growth lies. Okay. Now, I've got this, but probably not enough. Let's eliminate some of these things that we just know are not going to solve our problem here. Oh, I've got this narrow stripe. That might work. Or strip, I mean. Nope. This is something that I was using ink on. This was also was an awful, uh, I don't know about that. Now this, and it's got that yellow background, but boy. 
I would be introducing other colors here that we don't have. So maybe we'll say no for the time being. And I do have some book pages here that... Um, <laughs> I guess the, the redeeming quality here is that these colors match <clears throat> somewhat. You know what, I see colors in here that I can use in another project. <clears throat> so I'm going to put that aside for the time being. You know what, I think I'm going to make these leaves work. At first I was, whoopsie, something just hit the floor. This is probably too far out. Now I do have, I think, a couple pieces of this, <coughs> excuse me, watercolory look. But that pink is a foreign element. This calendar page has a um, has a um, blue numbers on it, so that I might be able to use that for some patching. I've got this that maybe looks a little bit like the water colory thing, and I think anything else here other than book pages. I could cut off that blue stripe, but that doesn't help me very much. Okay, the decision is in. I'm going to use these with possibly this to help me unify this. And the other thing to remember, and I have to remind myself is that um, this is starting to curl up here. <clears throat> There's a, a body under the rug. <clears throat> This is, I'll use this up just so that I say I did. Especially the parts that <clears throat> are matching up somewhat. And I'm not going to worry my little head about. Are the edges deckled or straight? I'm just going to try to get this done. And I guess if, like here, if I leave that tiny bit of white, or even that, the gold too, it ties in with other areas. Don't have any green on this thing, but do I care? I think in the big picture, it's not gonna matter. So I'm going to put that one there.
leave the little white and the um, gold showing. Make two more pieces out of this. Anyway, I hope that that you, <coughs> excuse me, collage and make master boards every chance you get. And give yourself, oh, that's probably what I was talking about. Give yourself the opportunity to be tested and to be challenged. I think quite often, and I, I don't want to in any way have this um, be construed as criticism of other creators, because that's not what it's about at all. Might be able to use this piece. Um, is <clears throat> that we know that there are some channels that are just... Same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. Kind of week in, week out, year in, year out. And um, you have to wonder, well, where, where and when is the growth happening? Now, I can see that if a person has fallen, stumbled across a winning formula, maybe there's reluctance to change. Or, you know, like don't ruin a good thing. But honestly, I'd have to shoot myself. Is this what I was planning to do? Oh, yeah, I think so. I'd have to shoot myself if I was forced to do the same thing over and over again. I just, that's not what turns my crank. That's not what makes me happy. And um, why, particularly, did I use up all, um, I guess I did use up all the pieces. Yeah. Um, why would I want well, at any point in life, but especially when, you know, you kind of know your crafting days are probably numbered. Why would I want to do that? This might have to wait till the end. Anyway, I said I was using this. Maybe I'll save these. Well, let's get rid of the hot pink because we're not introducing that. No, we don't want the green either. Mm, I got some green there, but maybe it'll, it'll be okay. I think this will naturally become kind of a focal point-ish thing. So maybe I should do this corner since it's, whoops, since it's quite big. So, essentially what I'm trying to say, I seem to have some difficulty spitting it out, is um, the best way to grow is to keep pushing yourself beyond where you feel comfortable. I'll trim that off in a bit. 
Um, okay, let me see. Get rid of that. <clears throat> Maybe I can put it that way. No, let's put it that way. And that way. <clears throat> so I'm just roughly measuring where I want the um, to tear it. You see that this is, um, well, at least in my opinion, looking a heck of a lot better than it was when we began. Got these little, little itty bitty guys here. I could cover that orange up. It is December 22nd, I believe, as I'm taping this. So just found out from my daughter, she and her man are hosting <coughs> Christmas this year in the new house, new old house, and uh, <clears throat> we were debating what should be the menu uh, for Christmas Eve. Some years we've done KFC, that's about all, as often as you want to eat that. Um, that radioactive green uh, coleslaw. <laughs> And, of course, the deep-fried stuff. Um, or, we in the past, we've also done Chinese food. And there's an absolutely awesome Chinese food place in the city that we love. When they were, um, or prior, to, we've been going there for years. Prior to COVID, of course, it was a sit-down. This thing keeps looking to me like it's lifting, but maybe that's an optical illusion. Um, prior to COVID, it was a sit-down restaurant with a daily uh, lunch menu and then a dinner menu or dinner buffet. Okay, let me say again. Lunch buffet, dinner buffet, weekend buffet. And, um... It was also fairly close to Griesbach, which is um, like military housing. Uh, there's a military uh, base, kind of not that far away, and there's some military housing. And quite often you'd get to see, you know, these people in bunches, you know, all in uniform and so on. And, feel so that little stab of patriotism and gratitude <clears throat> and um, yeah it was fun and it was good and the beauty of that is you can try of course different items uh, you know take a little bit try it if you like it great you're on to something new and if you don't well that's fine too you never you didn't order a whole entree that you hated and you know, on to the next thing. I think I will put this one here. Um, but then COVID came along, and of course, like everyone else, they had to shut down. And, but of course, remember how we were all living on, number one, we were eating all the stuff that we had in our fridges and freezers and pantries. And then this was going on like so long <clears throat> that takeout started looking like, oh, please, my kingdom for some takeout. 
Um, so then companies, restaurants, fast food places had to adapt. I remember quite often, well, in Canada, you wouldn't be surprised, that, um, that the little uh, card reader would sometimes be attached to the end of a hockey stick so that they could stick it out the takeout window into your, within your reach, so that you could pay for the, um, for your order. Um, anyway, this particular restaurant converted itself to strictly takeout. And, you know, obviously restaurant restrictions have long since been lifted, but they probably found that this business model let them save on staff, although they had some long-term staff there. Um, you know, I think Asian people are blessed in that they don't seem to age. So I'm sure some of those ladies weren't, or those women weren't that um, young, but they just look so darn good, like they never get any older. Okay, time to do this. So how about everywhere we see some ugly stripes, we add a bit of this and see if this will have to be burned or if it'll be lovely. Maybe on this particular part, maybe I will tear the edge. Anyway, so long story short, they are only open for takeout now. So that is what we are doing. And I mean, it's so nice when, you know, the quality is reliable. You don't have to worry about, well, is Joe cooking today or whatever? Like, it's, it's always good. I don't know. This may not have been one of my better ideas. Okay, let's do. We have a long road to cover there. So, anyway, and then Christmas Day, well, we're spending the night there. We'll do our own little private gift exchange. And then the next day, uh, uh, my aunt and my cousin. Um, you know, tiny little family will attend as will, uh, shall we say, the in-laws. Uh, so for that, we're having a, uh, a white elephant gift exchange and a traditional turkey, lurkey kind of thing. Now, because we're spending the night, you know, obviously all hands will be on deck. Although I have to say, she has found a man, and I think, huh, what a lucky girl. Well, and he's lucky as well, obviously she is. Um, at times we've said she's uh, Hazel 2.0. So naturally, I have to say she's a good kid. Anyway, um, lucky, lucky to have found a man that actually enjoys cooking. I wouldn't know that feeling personally. And, um, you know, when I think about how this guy springs up to take away our dishes, to, you know, load the dishwasher, put leftovers in the, in, you know, Tupperware or whatever. Like, it's just like, what? People live like this. <laughs> it's unreal. So, anyway, that's really nice. And his mother, apparently loves to cook, loves to bake, which again is so not me. 
So that too is very refreshing. I guess she's doing all the desserts. So, woohoo. I probably didn't get that glue close enough to the edge. Okay, now the only way this is gonna make sense is if I keep going here. Um, maybe I'll do, I'll do something here first. <coughs> oh, tore it in the wrong direction. Well, I guess I have a white edge showing there, but. Anyway, so that is really good. Little do they know that I'm bringing a box. I'm bringing, well, the hostess gift will be a, um, <laughs> a box of charades. That used to be the thing that we always did you know, as young marrieds, when we'd go to my mom and dad's for Christmas, you know, there'd be all kinds of, like, a house full of people, and you kind of, it's a, it's an activity that, you know, you always have those reluctant ones that you have to talk into taking part, but it also lends itself to um, large groups of people, because it's not like, you know, a board game where you can only maybe have two per side or something, two per team. Okay, I've got to cover this. So, uh, <clears throat> maybe I will tear it right there. And I could leave that stripe there. This so well, I have to do this. Anyway, guys, I hope that whoever and however you, whoever you spend time with and however you have uh, for your family get-togethers, whether it's Christmas. Um, or any other day of the year, you know, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Easter, like anything, any gathering. I just hope that that there are some, uh, that it's good. <clears throat> we know that most families have some, shall we say, unusual characters. And they are unlikely to change. And they're not always the old people. Sometimes they're the young ones that are either very moody. Oh, is this the year that she talks or is this the year that she's silent? You know, so that kind of stuff. Got to do it here. This piece is too short. <clears throat> now I'm going to be very close to that guy. No, that's all right. Where am I? I lost my spot. Let me do these. So this is long enough. And long enough. You know, there are those... Um, you know, and then there's the one that drinks too much. And then there's the one that... You know, lobs a, a controversial, conversational grenade into the group and then walks away and then backs away to see what, <laughs> what ensues. So, you know, yeah, I guess just kind of being aware of it and being ready for it is half the battle. Oh, so and so is, you know, he's going to do whatever. <clears throat> and 
And under that category are topics like politics, religion, um, the economy, what else? I think this is shaping up. And if you are the uh, grenade thrower, maybe surprise everyone this year and don't do it. Just don't do it. Um, I think that, too, if people can avoid being poor sports when they're playing <laughs> board games or charades or whatever, that would be a good thing. A sign of maturation. You don't want to be the one that they're talking about all the way home. Oh, yeah, so and so, sure. Yeah, count on that. You know, because usually all of us play a role in the group dynamic, either by actively being a provocateur or um, being silent when somebody, damn it, somebody needs to say something if a topic has gone in a direction that um, it shouldn't have because maybe it is reinforcing bigotry or something like that. So silence can be construed as agreement or compliance and we don't necessarily want that to be our legacy either. So Sometimes it takes maturity and courage to just say what needs to be said. Whoops. Um, you know, things, if you're old enough, things have changed. A little spot there. Things have changed so much, I think maybe so fast, that what if, what would have been politically correct, uh, acceptable, uh, funny back in the day is now uh, quite hurtful and, you know, and certainly sometimes long overdue, the change is long overdue. Other times, uh, my personal opinion is sometimes the pendulum has swung too far in the other direction. <clears throat> and you and you just feel like saying, oh, get a grip already. Are you serious? Um, okay, from your vantage point at home, what can you see? Oh, I have some little... Some work to do here, but then I've got this big island of, and this big island, and this. I guess it's an optical illusion, and I guess if I stop picking at it, it'll probably stay put. Anyway, it's too. I was saying in a recent video that I. I've kind of reorganized my desk. Oh, you won't believe what happened. I don't know if I should even tell you. Sometimes I get excited and I want um, results like right now. Not soon, but now. And I do things without total, um, without really thinking, to be honest. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. Let's call a spade a shovel. So I was carrying something heavy, and I hadn't really prepared uh, uh, 
a landing spot for it here on my desk. I had a bunch of stuff, like my desk was covered. And I couldn't just easily nudge this stuff in the way because I got this burden, this burden. Anyway, I feel <laughs> uh, and hear, I feel some pain and I hear a clunk. You will never guess what fell. Hold your horses. Exhibit A, Exhibit B. I was sick. Number one, he's heavy and it hurt. But number two, he hasn't even formally gotten a name. So I need, I was going to keep it a secret and, you know, maybe tell you after I've successfully repaired him. But... I'm going to try E6000. My husband, when I showed him the problem, because sometimes two heads are better than one. Now, I think this, I bought this guy used at a thrift store. He may have been broken. That may have been broken once before. And it would be a point of weakness, especially if he hit the floor funny. Um, I'm going to try E6000. That stuff is kind of miracle. Like, he looks... Anyway, I told uh, my husband that, you know, he is the channel mascot, and he need, he can, you know, he can't go through life without his uh, rack. So he said, well, why don't you just tell them that he shed his antlers? But... He's a poor excuse for himself without them. So I'll just leave him here as a reminder that I should try fixing that. Anyway, yeah, I was so annoyed with myself because I thought I had learned that lesson already. I think I'm going to have to just fudge some stuff here. Maybe I need a vertical. Number one, to use this up, and number two, to break up this, like I say, this island of um, that one pattern. So yeah, I was pretty horrified by that untoward incident. I think I'm going to try to just straddle, why don't I use this, whoopsie, now is that going to tear, oh no, that'll be fine, and I will bring it, I'll bleed it off, whoops, okay, mister. I promised Carol I would finally do the survey on my community tab. Um, no, not survey, the poll on the community tab of my channel to decide on a name. So clearly he has to be in tip top shape for that, for his big coming out. Okay, and likewise over here. Mind you, there's this whole area that doesn't, maybe I have to straddle this instead. Maybe it'll be quicker if I use this. Uh, maybe tear that there. 
And all these strips are kind of the same size. Let's make this one a bit wider just for, just for the heck of it. Oh, darn it. Oi, 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 oi. Oh, I should let me been a while since I put in a plug for the happy mail movement. I know that a lot of people were busy and intend to do it or are have started to participate but so let me just say let's brighten up January with some of that mail as well. So that, um, you know, because January can be pretty, I don't know, cold, overcast, dull, anticlimactic, a letdown, you know, maybe, maybe you were, got disappointed in some way over the holidays, maybe you were sick, maybe you didn't get the proposal you were hoping for thought there'd be a diamond ring in the box instead you got a toaster like you know stuff like that so that needs a little bit there and again I you know I hate to belabor this but um I'm going to use this up let's cover that green up Kill two birds with one stone. Mind you, why am I so concerned about green? I've got it on this paper itself. Yeah, so anyway, getting some lovely mail would brighten anyone's day and if you have uh, followed my lead and started organizing your scraps by color then you know what you have and you can readily put your fingers on it to use it maybe I should put that there and then I'll put this over here and we'll call this baby done. Oops. If I had a nickel for every time that fell over, I'd have 25 cents. It's just that I have this mat here and that, and then it wants to roll over and it's getting to the end of the That seems like too gigantic. Uh, we'll split this two ways. And I think that this will be fine she said hopefully and in fact when I get this piece down I will check the time and if it looks like we can afford the time we'll cut this baby up and you'll see what I mean Let's 
swish that out of the way. Let's swish this out of the way. Throw that away. Check the time. Oh, goodness. Mind you, maybe I should just accept that it takes an hour to do a, a video if you don't stop and fast forward and Okie dokie. There is no right or wrong here. I'll trim some of these edges. Need a bit of trimming, but that's okay. Uh, my knife, my knife, my knife. This is my favorite knife. It's an Alpha brand. And it's metal and it's petite. Uh, I don't know, it says SVR2. And that's on the blade. So, oh, made in England. Woohoo. Okay, so of course, this is either 12 by 12 or very close to it. So, let us. I mean, whatever, however we cut it, that's how it's going to be. So I'll line it up on the grid. And I also use these guidelines on here. I was wondering if there's anybody who knows for certain. I would think that eventually these things get uh, either damaged or worn out. Like with little nicks in them. For now, I think I'm still fine. Oh, here's a little. I just think this is a cat's meow. And this one is so much easier to read than this one. Although I suppose on a white piece of paper, this one is fine. And this, whoops. And this one is newer. So let's use this one. Okay. I've got it lined up on the grid. Um, three and a half. If I cut here, that'll be three and a half. We'll cut that in another direction soon. So that means that this is what, six and a half? No, three and a half, eight and a quarter. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Math is hard. Um, so let's just do like about a two inch because maybe this becomes a belly band. Again, lining it up, although now I can also use this grid on here. So that would be roughly two inches, maybe a little hair more, but I might have to trim the outer edge. <gasps> Look at Let's straighten this cut out. Maybe the blade needs changing. Now this, obviously, I have to... I'll fix this in a minute. Oh, okay, so what have we got here? We've got almost 10 inches by... Almost 10 inches by 8 inches. So, um, maybe let's do 5 inches because that would be a good, you know, usually a good pocket width.
three, four. That doesn't seem right. Seven inches must be this way. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Takes us over here. Again, we're not splitting an atom here, so I'll cut that one down too soon. Now this is four and three quarters by what? Eight? Maybe cut this into thirds, so just about three inches each. So if I did two and... Is anyone doing the math out there? I'm trying to get this line. Maybe I'll do two and three quarters and see. Something is out of square here. Okay, maybe that's better. Okay, that'll be a finished piece. Then I'll do two and three quarters again. this so got my things lined up there clearly why did I veer away maybe I've got ruts in my uh This could end up being like a bookmark size by the time I'm done with it. Okay. Oh, is this the one that's five inches? More or less. And how long? So let's just cut this in half. Eight and a quarter. Whoops. So I should forget about lining it up on the board, on the mat, and just line it, square it off with this grid here. Oh. That's probably more like, not half, but closer to it. And then this guy is almost three and three quarters. So let's do six. And this video has gone on long enough. Let us see the miracle that has been wrought. Oh, <laughs> that's exactly where I cut it. Um, I think the guy
kind of cool. And of course, they're just the, um, you know, first, first layer. What I could probably do is tone them down a bit with gesso. And I guess it would have been easier to do that when they were intact. And I was horrified by how long I've been at this already. So yes, that's what I'll do. I'm going to dry brush. Okay, I rearranged. Where did I put the gesso? There it is. Oh. And hopefully I can open this all without any effort. Uh, I just have to reach for a brush. I've said before I like using these bristle brushes. Because I'm just barely, and I'm not starting out oh, with a wet brush. I'm just sort of pouncing. Just pouncing. And of course, because the the navy um, this paper is the darkest, toning that down is really what is going to unify this a bit. Do you hear that sound? That's my chair. Well, that sound is different, but I used to try to tell you that, that those are my hips, but you're not that gullible. Um, I, <laughs> tell me what kind of a chair. Tell me what kind of a chair you use. I've never sat in a gaming chair, and I think that they're quite a bit bigger than a traditional office chair. Like I have the, you know, the pneumatic lifting, you know, adjustments. You hear that? I hope you can, but it's very annoying to me. Um, so take a gander, you know, way easier to, to decorate this than this. And the nice thing about gesso is that it dries so quickly. And I'm just I'm just dipping in the the surplus that let, ended up in the cover of the jar. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't know, I can't, I don't remember how old this chair is. It's not that old, but 
you know, it's like, it's one of the most important tools in the craft room. So, or one of the most important features in a craft room. Because let's face it, one's hips, back, knees, neck are all impacted by that. Um, you know, trying to get something as ergonomic as possible. I've got this dumb habit off um, if I'm like looking at the computer or whatever, not actively using both hands, I lean on the left armrest. Well, what is that doing to my spine? Nothing good, let me assure you of that. So I try to be aware. I think another thing that is not good, okay, I just now pushed my butt back to the back of the chair and my sort of to the lumbar, lumbar, lumbar um, support in the, in the chair back, chair back. But like it's, I don't know. I have, um, my laptop is a MacBook Pro. And at the time I got it, it was the biggest one they had because I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> vision is only going to get uh, harder, not easier. So let me make it as big as I can. And I know that there are adjustments on the computer to change the display size and all that. I think I now have to just gingerly dip into here. Oh, that's a lot. Um, I find that too often I'm leaning forward. My back is not making contact with the back of the chair. And, of course, my habit of... Um, setting a timer for every 20 minutes to force me to, well, number one, it scares the bejeebers out of me, even though I'm the one setting it. Whoopsie. Um, you can't very well do that if, you know, you're doing a video that lasts for an hour. But anyway, I ha so I haven't been doing that to force myself to drop everything, stand up, walk, you know, go downstairs or walk across the house or, you know, just move. Because I think that some of us, hear me out, I think some of us might have addictive type personalities. <laughs> we will sit in our chairs or anywhere crafting until our bodies are stiff our minds have you know congealed over our hands are claw-like because we love what we do but of course that's not good for anybody's body so I don't know what the answer is but maybe let me know what kind of a chair you have are you happy with it? Do you hate it? I think there might be a new chair in my future because I just feel like... Oh, and another thing I do that's also dumb. Um, of course, this is a, a chair on casters so I can roll around, turn around. I put one foot up on the... You know, one of those, is there a three or a five? I guess it's a five-legged, <laughs> it's a five-legged creature. So I do that, which again, is throwing a back out of, see? I think these are the cat's meow because they I think this could use a little more here. My brush really is dry. Because now it just reads as orange and blue. Yeah. 
off. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to go. I'm going to walk somewhere. And I'm going to let this dry a wee bit more. Oh, I'm going to wash my brush. Let this dry a wee bit more. And then do the corner rounding. Because I always like that. And maybe since I still have this, maybe I'll just do another one um, just on my own. So challenge yourself, people. Challenge yourself. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.